Oftentimes you'll hear people say, I don't want to do guided because I'm concerned about the guide breaking, the surgical guide breaking during surgery. And there's a couple of reasons why a, a dental guide might break. The number one reason a dental guide would break, the number one reason, is that it wasn't built right. Now, you might be saying, well, okay, that seems to be low-hanging fruit. It seems to be pretty obvious that it wasn't built right, but, but what is right? So you say, well, what, what is right? And the fact is, is that the guide can be structured in a way, mechanically designed in a way to make it superior, to make it stronger, and to make it more functional. So when we design guides for our students in our, in our, in our institute, we design them in a way so that they're mechanically strong. Let me give you an example. Most guides have an access window. The access or a viewing window allows you to ensure that the guide is snugly seated on top of the substrate. In this case, most of the time, teeth. So you want to be able to look in that window and see that the guide, the intaglio surface of the guide is touching the teeth. Great. Where that access window is, is important. Because if you have a basic understanding of stress distributions, if you put that hole in a location that has high stress, the likelihood of your guide breaking with the doctor applying just a little bit of force could be high. So strategic placement of your access window is like the first thing. Second, it should be completely obvious, the material that you're printing with. And you know now there are a plethora, I like using that word, there's a plethora of, of resins that are printable, right? And so you go, well, this guy just snapped. And you go, you, you, the follow-up question is, laboratory, what, what material did you use? And is there a better material out there? So what my, my suggestion on the material side is to always choose the strongest plastic. It's pennies. The, the surgical plastic, that we, the resin we use, it's pennies to print the guide, so that's not a problem. So pick a nice, strong resin. The third thing is... In the design software, they give you the ability to change the thickness of the guide. Okay, so from thin to thick. We max that out every single time. Why? It's never a problem for the patient. If, if you're developing a, um, a night guard and the night guard's one millimeter thick or two millimeters thick or three millimeters thick, by the time you get to three, the patient might be like having a hard time closing, right? If you're talking about a surgical guide, you can go straight for three or four right out the gate and it's not a problem because they're not sleeping with it they're not functioning with it you're it's only in the mouth for a couple of minutes tops three four minutes tops you're in and out so making the guide thicker also helps enormously so when you put all these things together the the implant design is the first thing you would think about right the material the way it's designed the shape of it so one more point here is with the shape okay so you don't want your implant a surgical guide to be over redundant. You don't want it to go around the entire arch and form a U shape. That's typically over redundant. You would like to see it more like the letter J. And J on this side, J on this side, it doesn't matter, but a letter J prevents or reduces the risk of having it over redundant. Now, over redundant is, a, is an engineering term for I have too many options for the system to choose from. And the easiest way to understand over determinant is a coffee table. So we've all been at the coffee table with our friend. We get our coffee, we set it down, and then the table shifts. And it goes clink, and then the coffee spills, and everybody's upset, right? And then it goes back the other way. And, back in, and so what you do is you take a napkin, you fold it seven times, and you stick it under one of the legs to try to level it out. The reason it's shifting is that there are two stable positions. It has a position to the left, and it has a position to the right. In both of those positions, the table's stable, okay? The, the reason it has two different positions is because the table has four legs. And we know from school, really early on in school, you only need three legs to create a plane, three points to find a plane. So if you'd like for your coffee to never spill, all coffee tables should have three legs, okay? If you have three legs, you'll never spill that espresso. You'll be a happy camper, okay? Because with three legs, you can't, sh you can't rock it. That's why we have tripods for cameras. That's why we have tripods for, for uh, lighting. It's because they're stable irrespective of the level of the ground. It takes that into consideration. Well, when you place a surgical guide, if you think about it, if you keep adding legs and each leg would be a tooth, each time you add a tooth, it's like adding another leg to that table, you run the risk of it rocking. So that can increase 
the instability in your surgical guide. So the way you drive that down is you make it as small as possible without losing stability. So it's an optimization problem. And the way we typically do that is by creating a J shape. So if I was doing, let's say, a lower molar on this side, my J would run like this. And then on the other side, if I was on the lower right, my J would run like this. And that's how you can get a nice stable system without having over redundance. So then the last part of this discussion comes down to us. And this might hurt a little bit, but the last reason a guide would break is gonna be us, the doctor, okay? It's plastic. It's normally plastic. Sometimes they can be metal if you're doing full arch cases and such, but typically metal is reserved for the bigger cases. But it's plastic, which means we have to be very, very um, meticulous in our surgical protocols so that we don't apply deleterious forces to our surgical guide that will cause it to break. So if basically, let's summarize it this way. If you're heavy-handed, you, you can break a guide. And so if you break it, the first thing you do is you blame the lab, okay? So that's, we already talked about that. You, you blame the lab, but the second thing you do is you blame yourself. And after that, there's nobody else left. It's either poorly designed or a result of you being a little heavy-handed, okay? Now, how can you be heavy-handed? Well, you can be heavy-handed if you don't understand the way the, the, the guide system works, the way it's been set up to, but also even with the guide systems that are, that are presented by the manufacturers. There are ways, there are tricks and little tips to use, whether you're using a keyed system or a keyless system, there are tricks and tips that you can use with experience to prevent interarch interferences. So the interarch interferences is where we get most of the deleterious forces. We hit the top teeth as we're trying to place an implant on the bottom, and the motor, the head of the motor, is hitting the top tooth and you can't get access to the guides, the master cylinder. And in this case, what you try to do is you say, uh, Mrs. Smith, can you open any bigger? And they, and they can't. And then you kind of force it. You try to force it in there. By doing so, you run the risk of breaking your surgical guide. So the, the, the trick here is to learn what those little tricks are in the chair side to prevent you from having to do that. And in every case, in every sy system that I've ever used, and I've used just about every one of them, there's always tricks to work around it. So learning good surgical skills will help you for prevent being the problem and then having good communication with a lab that knows how to do this, okay? Because surgical guides are easy to do in the digital system. You can hit a button and AI will generate a surgical guide. The problem is, does the AI have the engineering background that we just discussed to do it right? And if it does, Great. If it doesn't, you have to communicate that to your lab and or to your AI program to say, this is the preferences that I want to minimize risk and improve outcomes for my patients. So if you're interested in learning more about guide design and such, my technical assistant who does all of our surgical guides has a, uh, a video that you can purchase. And there's more for that information can be found on Stanley Institute. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer. Follow if you like for more.